today's class, I'll be discussing a topic of standard costing. So this topic is relatively very important and it's important for us to understand it thoroughly. Let's try to understand what is the meaning of standard cost. I'm sure you must be knowing what is a budget. Budget is a forward looking approach. When we look in the future and we decide about setting expenses, income, asset and liabilities, we call them budget. Similarly, in standard costing, we set the standard in advance and then we try to compare those standards with the actual figure. If my standard is better than my actual, the difference could be favorable, vice versa, it could be adverse. So basically, a standard costing is a predetermined standard for cost as well as for sales, which is being compared to, say, actual figures. And that's the difference we have to calculate, which is called variance. In this chapter, we'll be discussing all the variances related to sales as well as cost. The standards can be of various type. The first type of standard is called ideal standard. As the name suggests, this standard is ideal. It's been set in a condition which is very favorable for the company. Everything is going to be perfect. Then how the standard will look like? We call that ideal standard. It's too good to look at, but at the same time, it may not be very practical because the situation for business may not be favorable every time. So that means ideal standard can be more theoretical and it may result into larger variances in practical life. The second type of variance is called basic variance. The basic standards are those standards which are set at basic level. It could be a particular year. For example, say 2012 was a very good year. So the standards were based at the base of 2012. All the years ahead will be compared to this base. We call that basic standards. Again, this particular standard also has certain flaws. Every year, every period, business may not have same situations. And in those situations, it may become challenging. And then comes attainable standard. As the name suggests, these are the standards which are attainable. That's practically approached. So when it comes to cost or it comes to sales, these are the standard which company can achieve. We call that attainable standard. Now, when we understand the theoretical part of it, let's try to understand how to solve question. But before that, I'm just drawing a graph here. There are three topics of variance which we'll be discussing. The first about basic variance. The second will be theoretical variance. And third will be advanced version of variance. So right now, I'm just going to make a draft as to how we'll go about it and how this structure looks like all right so let's start with variance we have two type of variance sales variance and we have cost variance in sales variance it can be subdivided into two category selling price variance and selling quantity variance. The cost can be subclassified as material, labor and overhead. The material can further be classified as material price variance, material volume or quantity variance. The labor can be classified as three types, labor rate variance, idle time variance and efficiency variance. The idle time variance we calculate for labor. So that's the third variance which is considered in labor. Overhead can be classified into two types, variable overhead and fixed overhead. Again, there will be further classifications of variable overhead and fixed overhead, which can be related to expenditure and efficiency. 
Similarly, for fixed overhead also, we can have fixed overhead expenditure as well as efficiency. So that is the first part of variance. We gonna type, discuss two type of variance: sales variance, cost variance. Sales variance sub classified as price and quantity. Cost as material, labor, and overhead. Material can further be sub classified as price and volume. Labor sub classification is rate, idle time, and efficiency. Overhead classification could be variable overhead, fixed overhead. Variable overhead sub classification, expenditure efficiency, and so is for fixed overhead expenditure and efficiency. So that's the basic variance. Once we discuss basic variance, we shall be discussing another part of variance, which is generally linked to quantity. Now, quantity can be of sale, material, labor, anything. So I'm just discussing it here. Let's say it's material. So further, it will be discussed as yield variance and mix variance so that's gonna be the advanced version also in advanced version we shall be discussing there are two different approaches to calculate variance the first one is this we call that traditional way the second approach is going to be planning and operating variance approach so the planning operating variance as well as mix and yield will be considered in our session which is called advanced variance calculation. Now as we understand how we gonna go about it, let's try and understand with sales first. So now that we have understood how we gonna approach those variances, let's start with first variance is called sales variance. Before that, as we discussed, how to calculate variance that is more important. So standard cost minus actual cost that makes variance. When your actual is better than your standard cost in sales, we make it favorable variance and favorable variances are denoted by F in brackets. When my actual is worse than what I thought as a standard, we call that adverse and we denote it by A in the brackets. Please remember that the sign of variance will be depending on the fact whether it's sales or cost. In sales, we always want our actual to be better than our standard. So here, the actual in formula will come first and it will be compared to standard. If actual is better than standard, we call that favorable. Vice versa, it's called adverse. In terms of cost, my standard should be better than my actual. So if my standard is higher than my actual, we call that favorable. Vice versa, it's called adverse. So please do not forget by calculation, if you are calculating for sales or you are calculating for cost, your sign will vary accordingly. Alright, now let's move to first variance which is called sales price variance. The formula which I am putting here might be a little different than what you see in book. Even if you use the same formula, you will get the same results. This is just the way of presentation which might differ from book to book. So please try not to match the formulas in various books because every author might use a different way of putting it. But end of the day, the purpose remains same. The theme remains same and the base remains same. The sales price variance formula says the actual price minus standard price multiplied by actual quantity. AQ stands for actual quantity. Now onward, I will be using short form. So this AQ stands for actual quantity. Now let me also give you a fictitious figures. It will be much easier for you to understand. 
let's see it's a question given so let's put standards here let's put actuals here for example a company thought they're gonna sell 100 units the per unit price will be 5 that was their standard actually company thought sold 120 units at the rate of 4.5 each now that's a question let's try to put this in our equation how much is our actual price that's 4.5 how much is our standard price that is 5 and how much is actual quantity that is 120 units the difference between 2 is 0 0.5 multiplied by 120 which makes it 60 now question analysis. Is it favorable or is it adverse? Go back and remember what we discussed. When my actual is better than my standard, that makes it favorable, vice versa makes it adverse. See the sign inside the bracket, it's negative. You thought you will sell at 5. You actually sold at 4.5. That means it's a negative. So the 60 variance will be adverse. Vice versa, it would have been favorable. Please remember that. The signs are always decided inside the brackets, not outside. If in, inside the bracket it's negative figure, whatever you multiply it with, it's going to be the same. I hope you are clear with this. Let's move to next variance, which says, Sales, Volume, Profit Variance. That's the full name of this variance called Sales, Volume, Profit Variance. This particular formula is little different than cost. Because it's a sale, that's why we are using the word profit also here. Generally, you would not find this kind of variance in cost. Let's see how does it work. The sales volume profit variance says actual volume minus standard volume. Till here we are okay because it says sales volume variance. Now when it comes to multiplying it with dollar value, then there can be two situations. Either a company is using absorption costing or a company is using marginal costing. I'm sure by now you know what is the meaning of absorption costing and what is the meaning of marginal costing. If not, let me quickly tell you in terms of absorption costing, we calculate gross profit which says sales minus production cost. So this production cost includes both variable as well as fixed cost. In terms of marginal, we use the formula called sales minus variable cost. That means no fixed cost is considered and this output is called contribution. Alright, now there can be two situations. If company uses absorption costing method or a company is using marginal costing method. Now if it is absorption costing, we shall be multiplying this with gross profit per unit but standard so standard gross profit per unit will be multiplier if company uses absorption costing if company uses marginal costing the multiplier will be standard contribution per unit. This is how we calculate these two figures. Remember this is going to be standard not actual. Alright. How will you come to know if question is silent about the absorption or marginal costing method? Suppose this is a question. This is my selling price. The question has given me data that variable cost is 1.5. And the fixed cost per unit is 2.5. If that's the fact given, 
that goes without saying I'm using absorption costing because my question has given me both the data variable as well as fixed if question will not give you this data of fixed cost you have no option but to use marginal so there can be two situations one question will specifically tell you which method to be used if question is silent about it see what all figures are given if question does not give you fixed cost you can definitely not use absorption costing all right so in this question our total cost which is variable cost plus fixed cost makes it four the way we calculate gross profit is sales minus production cost which is five minus four that makes it one so our actual volume is 120 units our 100 unit standard cost Standard volume is 100 unit multiplied by 1. When we solve this, it will give us 20. Now, what will be the sign of this 20? Is it adverse or is it favorable? This is going to be favorable. We sold more units than what we thought. Let's make it favorable. That's how we calculate sales volume profit variance. So, we discussed two types of variance. Selling price variance, sales volume profit variance. If you have to calculate total sales variance, please add both the variances and use the basic mathematical rules. One adverse, one favorable, both will be subtracted. Both are favorable will be added. Both are adverse will be added and negative sign will prevail. So this is how we work on sales variance. A quick recap, two type of variance, selling price, sales volume, profit variance. In selling price, it's actual price minus standard price multiplied by actual quantity. In sales volume, profit variance, it's going to be actual quantity minus standard quantity multiplied by either the gross profit per unit standard or contribution per unit standard. This is how these two formulas will be calculated. In order to get comfortable with all those formulas, please try to solve on your own. No matter how many times you see the answers or you see the videos, unless you try to solve these questions, it will be problematic for you to remember the formulas. All right. Once we understand the sales volume variances, let's try to get into cost variances. Now, when we understood the sales variance, let's move to cost type of variance. The first cost variance we'll be discussing is called material. The material price variance can be calculated in two ways. One, material price variance. MPV stands for material price variance. The formula is standard material price minus actual material price mp stands for material price and that is multiplied by actual quantity now if you have noticed something in sales variance we were using the formula actual minus standard here i'm using the formula standard minus actual because as we discussed in cost, we want our actuals to be lower than our standard, not higher. So in formula, standard will come first and then comes actual. Okay. Again, let me put a fictitious question here. Let's say this is standard, this is actual. Company thought in order to make one unit, it takes 10 kg of raw material and per kg raw material cost us 2. That's our standard. Actually, company made 100 units and the material what we used were 980 kg at the rate of 1.5 per kg. So that's our question. Let's put it in the formula. How much is our standard material price? That's 2. How much is our actual material price? 1.5 and the actual quantity. Now most of the students will get confused here whether to use 100 or whether to use 980. 
Use the logic. The unit is a finished product. How can a company buy material as a unit? What company will be buying as a raw material? So we shall be using 980 kg here. I hope you are clear about it. Do not use production unit, take material. Alright? So that gives us 0.5 multiplied by 980, which is 49. Now, is it favorable or adverse? Yes, it's going to be favorable. Why is it going to be favorable? Why is it going to be favorable? Because our standard is higher than the actual. So that is the material price variance. The second says material quantity variance. The formula is standard material on actual production minus Actual quantity multiplied by standard price. Now in this formula, we will nowhere be using the concept of profit. Because the profit concept only is being used for sales, not for cost. So in this formula, the first part says standard material on actual production. What does it mean? If company makes one unit, they use 10 kg. So if company needs to make 100 units, how much will it take? 10 kg multiplied by 100 unit, that's 1000 kg. That's what we call standard material on actual production. That's going to be 10 kg multiplied by 100, which is 1000. 1000 minus 980 multiplied by standard rate, which is 2. That gives us 20 multiplied by 2. 40, 40 favorable because again we use lesser material than what we thought. That's what we call favorable variance. If you have to calculate total material variance, please add this and this. That will become total material variance, material price as well as material quantity. So I'm sure by now you're clear about cost variance as well. Just have a quick look at it. After material, it's time for us to discuss labor variance. The first variance we'll be discussing is called labor rate variance. Calculation wise and formula wise, it is very similar to what we did in material price. But the price is the wrong word to use for labor. So instead of using the word price, we call that rate. The formula is Standard rate minus actual rate multiplied by actual hours. The material is, sorry, the labor is not quantified on quantity but on the hours they use. So that's why we are multiplying it with actual hours and we do not use the word quantity. I am using the similar example what we did in material. Now let's put certain figure related to labor. So in order to make one unit, it takes 5 hours. Per hour we pay 10. So suppose that's the question given. We actually used 550 hours at the rate of 11 each and the labor actually worked for 520 hours. So this is worked hour and this is paid hour. I repeat, 
company pays for 550 hours and labor only works for 520 hours that's the question in this how much is our standard rate that is 10 how much is our actual rate that is 11 how much is actual hours now the question arises which hour again use a logic when i'm saying how much did we pay so our consideration should be the hours paid not hours worked so we actually paid for 550 hours that makes it 550 negative so that's my labor rate variance which is negative if you remember in our first graph what we made a flow chart we discussed one additional variance for labor which was idle time what is idle time a time where labor is not working they are not productive this variance is always negative so we goes without saying whenever there is a labor rate variance it's going to be adverse how do we calculate idle time variance idle time variance is equal to idle hours multiplied by standard rate how to calculate idle hours company pays for 550 labor works for 520 that means the difference between two the 30 hours are idle labor is not working in those hours so idle hours are 30 our standard rate is 10 that makes a 300 negative please do not forget to put the sign whether it's favorable or adverse once we are done with it let's move to third variance which says labor efficiency variance it's time for us to understand whether labor is efficient or they are not efficient the formula is going to be standard hours on actual production which is similar to what we discuss in material minus actual hours worked multiplied by standard rate please remember that efficiency variance will only be calculated on those hours which are worked not paid so this variance will have actual hours worked not paid please adjust actual hours with idle time so now an example our standard hours on actual production is for one unit it takes 5 hours so for 100 unit it's going to take 500 hours labor actually worked for 520 hour multiplied by standard rate of 10 that gives us 200 favorable answer if question asks calculate total labor variances add all three this this and this this is how we calculate labor variance now let's discuss a variance related to variable overhead it is very similar to our labor variance we call that variable overhead variances in variable overhead variance also we will be taking hours as base but the only difference is what you have to look out at either it can be calculated on direct labor hour or it can be calculated some other hours or some other base so most probably question will be very clear about as to what how the variable overheads are calculated if variable overhead are calculated on labor hour use the same hours what we use for labor if question says some other hours machine hour or something else use that as a base so the first variance is variable overhead expenditure variance the formula is standard variable overhead rate minus actual 
variable overhead rate multiplied by actual hours. Please remember, here we will only use hours worked if we are using the same hours as direct labor, not the hours paid. So let's say the similar example, let's say standard variable overhead rate is 10, actual variable overhead rate is say 11. So actual hours here will be 520. So your answer is going to be 50, 520 negative. The next variance will be variable overhead efficiency variance. It's a similar formula. Standard hours on actual production minus actual hours multiplied by standard rate which is 500 minus 520 multiplied by 10 that makes it 200 adverse. This is how we calculate variable overhead variance. When it comes to fixed overhead variance, it's very very similar to variable overhead variance. Similar way what we calculate here as an expenditure and efficiency, you can also calculate it for fixed cost. So that's all about all the variances in the traditional approach about sales variance, cost variance which include material, labor and overhead. In our next class, we will be discussing about the advanced period. Till then, stay tuned. See you soon. Thank you.